This video illustrates how carbon agroforests are essential to solving all the current challenges, including all the climate challenges, that we, 8 billion humans, face, and make us thrive and care for the planet like never before. Carbon forests, especially carbon agroforests, can solve all of today's challenges and make us prosper, but this happens through a natural, sustainable, multi-layered and multi-branched process, life cycle, that we modern humans are not very familiar with anymore. So for modern humans to understand the unique and mind-blowing potential of agroforests, the illustration from the point of view of a gasification and renewable energy production unit in this video could clarify, but it only shows from this angle or this approach which will also be simplified. Clarification from other angles, approaches and aspects of carbon agroforests with similar objectives are the subject of other videos. Renewable energy production with focus on gasification and renewable energy production. We start out with gasification, bottom and center of the illustration on your screen, which for many could look counterintuitive, that only partially but probably best illustrates the renewable energy production aspect of carbon agroforests and carbon forests which, probably surprisingly for most, already on their own have the potential to remove all post-industrial carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, while simultaneously also producing mind-boggling quantities of possibly the most advanced, revolutionizing and multifunctional materials and products humans ever knew, like graphene and graphite, that are carbon or carbon-based, and of which the high grades are currently sold on the market for prices per gram roughly of the order of the price of gold per gram. Further, only through carbon agroforests and gasification these most advanced, revolutionizing and multifunctional materials can be produced sustainably and in large quantities, including the much more voluminous top-down production, and as such deserve the certification as the only renewable and natural graphene, graphite and so on, the same for the products made with them. Further they can be produced in decentralized ways or in the vicinity of small and large industries that make use of these highest graded graphene, graphite and so on provenient from carbon agroforest and forest products. In the case of batteries, including giant stationary batteries for grid-scale storage and EV car batteries, unlike for other battery elements, there are no comparable alternative material for graphene and graphite and the likes. In the case of graphite there currently is 1. Mined graphite and 2. Synthetic graphite. 1. Mined graphite, which is confusingly called natural graphite, is in fact mined and finite, while 2. Synthetic graphene is made from petroleum coke and the production of both uses lots of energy and emits large quantities of carbon dioxide etc. Evidently, these for the renewable market's key materials ideally should be renewable themselves. Consequently, renewable graphene and renewable graphite from carbon agroforests would be extremely welcome and will be inevitable at some point, simply because the production of mined graphite and synthetic graphite is unsustainable and finite, and already involved in trade wars, and China's economic grip. To put things in perspective, one removal of 35 to 100 billion tons of carbon dioxide CDR a year is achieved when carbon agroforests are applied in an area equivalent to roughly the size of Brazil, the USA, Europe or the Amazon, research and calculations are subject of other videos. 2. Only graphite's role in EV batteries is expected to triple from $56 billion in 2023 to $187 billion by 2032. Compared to graphite, graphene is considered far superior, much more expensive, and more of it will be needed. The gross domestic product, GDP of Brazil, was worth $2,173.67 billion US dollars in 2023. So the production of graphene and graphite will become much more than the BNP of Brazil, once also the graphene production inevitably will be scaled up. In 2024 Brazil is the eighth largest in gross domestic product, GDP in the world. Most probably the demand is not yet visible simply, and amongst others, because there is not yet sufficient production to start industrial applications. While carbon agroforests also produce roughly 100 times more food per hectare, than the actual unsustainable monoculture agriculture does. Globally 30% or more of agricultural soils quickly degraded in the course of the monoculture agriculture or the confusingly cold green revolution. This aspect of carbon agroforests and how it also has the potential to solve all challenges is the subject of another video of this playlist. The simplest way to grasp how we can and should harvest renewable energy from carbon agroforests is to illustrate the process of gasification of carbon agroforest products that ideally does not even involve the trunks or logs of trees, since trees represent the backbone of the standing capital that produces food energy, fuels and superior basic materials, and also remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. A Brazil nut tree can live and produce for 500 years and more. While possibly for the general public gasification will look like burning of wood, 
it is rather the contrary. The products from gasification of agroforest products can replace, amongst others, all what refineries, gas production units, GPU, and coal mines and industry produces, which in the case of refineries, petrochemical industry, is the distillation to several fuels and basic materials. In the case of crude oil refineries, obviously the crude oil already is a product of former drilling elsewhere etc. Obviously mining, drilling and crude oil refining are not sustainable and emit large amounts of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. Oil refineries are typically large industrial complexes with extensive piping running throughout, carrying streams of fluids between large chemical processing units. In many ways, oil refineries use many different technologies and can be thought of as types of chemical plants. Oil refineries etc. are not decentralized and have significant environmental impacts and risk of sabotage of energy installations. Geopolitical tensions may pose risks to future oil etc. supply, increasing the cash value of holding oil contracts, also known as the convenience yield, thereby putting upward pressure on prices. The current market presents large-scale price volatility. In comparison, the gasification of carbon forest products are simple installations and can and should be decentralized, and even can be mobile, and in or close to their respective forests or the cities, communities, etc. they serve most. Obviously oil and gas drilling as well as coal mines are much more difficult to be decentralized. Unlike oil refineries the so-called gasification waste products are natural and renewable products that all have their renewable applications. The smaller gasification installations typically smells like a campfire and not at all like chemical plants. Larger scaled gasification installations when based on forest products do not smell at all and still do not present environmental impact and can contribute to develop future energy systems which are efficient, safe in design and operation.